When it comes to representation of women love women couples in Western TV, it's been rightly pointed out that the vast majority of characters are two white ladies, or at least one of the two is. So here is a list of 10 BIPOC couples where both are not, or at the very least are biracial because otherwise this already short list would be even shorter. Okay, let me know which of the following couples you like the best in the comments and let me know if you know of any other BIPOC lesbian couples that are on Western TV that I missed. Starting with the bold type, this show follows Kat, Jane and Edison, three friends as they work at the Women's Magazine in New York in what some people have called a cross between Sex in the City and The Devil Wears Prada, which is not totally off the mark. While Kat starts off the series as straight, she is quickly questioning her sexuality when, in the first episode, she meets Adina, a photographer and a self proclaimed claimed proud Muslim lesbian. You know, honestly, I actually really get the whole girl thing. I do. But, you know, for me, I could just never get past this. She doesn't understand her feelings at first, but she ultimately comes to understand that she isn't as straight as she thought she was. Through five seasons, we get to see these ladies with their on and off again relationship. We get to see them working through their various issues relating to sexuality, race, feminism, and just figuring out who they are as people. There is a lovely chemistry that I definitely dig between them as a couple, and I appreciate the layers and nuances these characters were given. Meanwhile, Black Lightning is a superhero show that sees the Pierce family discovering that not only is the father the fabled but retired hero Black Lightning, but that the daughters have some pretty intense superpowers too that suddenly emerge, and perhaps not too soon, as the local gangs have a new potent drug on the market that is tipping the balance of power in the area. Anissa, the eldest daughter, is an out lesbian, which is revealed early on when we see her in bed with her girlfriend, but it's also apparent that the relationship is on the rocks, something only confirmed when she meets Grace. While the start of their relationship takes some time, it was developed in a really satisfying way where Grace became involved in the major action of the show and solidified her position at Anissa's side. But now, I know I'm not alone anymore. I found my cure. It's my connection to you. I dug this couple. I loved getting to see their relationship evolve over the four seasons. Moving on to more sci-fi realms, Away follows a group of astronauts led by the excellent Hilary Swank as they make their first manned mission to Mars and the people they left behind. Lu Wang, the chemist of the crew, has left Mei Chen behind, the woman she fell in love with, over the two years of preparation for the mission. When her attachment is found out, Mei's position as a CNSA mission control is quietly replaced, much to Lu's dismay. We get to see the backstory of how they met and the quiet evolution of their love, and while their storyline is not the main one, it plays out largely in episode 3, it is however referenced throughout. I thought it was beautifully done and the acting by Vivian Wu was top notch. Jumping far away from deep space, Scam is a franchise series originating from Norway, with three of them having a season featuring a woman love woman protagonist for France, Spain and Germany. The format of the show follows a group of friends as they navigate high school. Each season follows a different character, with clips going live as they happen in real time. In season 6, the German version called Druck focuses on Fatou, who has an almighty crush on Kyomi as she struggles academically to make her way through high school. It seems like it's not entirely one-sided, but the path to true love never runs smooth, and that equals plenty of angst and drama. And a turtle. And a fixation on axolotls. Keeping it in teen drama mode, with Pretty Little Liars we had Emily and Maya, and while Maya isn't the end game relationship for Emily, and while Maya's exit is not what anyone wants, we still got to see them experience the rush of first love amongst all the drama of the actual show over the first three seasons. I can't believe you would do all this for me. I admit, I like to live life in the grey area, but the way I feel about you is crystal clear. Of course, it doesn't stay easy when their love is uncovered by Maya's mother, who is deeply conservative, and Emily's family also struggles with her orientation, and it does lead to the girls being separated. Now, though their relationship doesn't last, they are still cute, and if teen drama is your thing, and female friendships is your jam, it's a fun show to watch, which is a very different kind of show from Quintified, which focuses on the Morales family, whose neighborhood is undergoing gentrification. Within the family is Anna, who is in a long-term relationship with Jessica Castillo. We were kids when we found in love, remember? And look at us now. <laughs> okay, okay. And 
stuff with the PDA. Y'all been together for like ever. So this is for keeps. Am I going to be a tia soon? There is no drama about that fact. In fact, the drama emerges when Anna is asked by the new white landlord looking to make the neighbourhood or hipster chic and pays her to do a mural. It's her opportunity to reach a wider audience with her artwork, but it also means she is contributing to the very thing that will ultimately price the community out of their neighbourhood, and her activist girlfriend is not there for it. The entire show is great, and the characters are all likeable, definitely worth a watch. Another likeable character is Poussey from Orange is the New Black and her sweet romance with Soso. We will not mention how that ends though. Orange is the New Black follows the inmates and staff of a minimum security women's prison in the US and all the stuff they get up to while they serve their time, sometimes using levity and sometimes really racking up the drama. It's a lot. While it took until season 4 for Poussey to get a girlfriend, when she did, it was beautiful and possibly the least toxic relationship on that cray cray show. I just don't know. If I'll ever be what you need me to be. You gotta let me handle it. Which was a welcome reprieve amongst so much intense drama. Getting a soul is also pretty dramatic, which is what Maze, a demon and therefore inherently doesn't have one, realises she needs when she finds herself falling for Eve, yes, that Eve, from the Bible, who escaped heaven to reincarnate and ends up searching out Lucifer because she and Adam had a threesome way back when and she's still thinking about Lucifer all this time later. And while Mae starts out as a friend, her feelings evolve, and she's not used to having feelings. Meanwhile on Batwoman, following Kate Kane going missing after the first season, Ryan Wilder dones the mantle as Batwoman, and with the mid-season finale of season 3 recently aired, it's clear that there's a slow burn romance developing between her and Sophie Moore, Kate Kane's ex. Ryan Wilder is hot as hell, and you're amazing together. It's an enemy to lovers journey which includes pretending to be each other's date. You know, that good stuff. It is a pairing that I've admittedly only seen in clips because Batwoman as a show is darker and grittier than I tend to like, but I may just give it another go after seeing these two ladies and their couple potential. For a completely different kind of show, She's Gotta Have It follows Nola Darling, a polyamorous pansexual who is all about living life on her terms without allowing society to box her in. Within the first season, she swears off men and kindles a romance with Opal that is intense but short-lived. Whoa! I am legit feeling her. I feel so safe. You know, I don't believe in labels, but as a sex-positive polyamorous pansexual, words like Monogamy and family have never even seemed like a remote possibility. But she owns her own nursery. She's a horticulturalist. Ugh, it's so hot, right? And in season two, they get back together and we see a more serious relationship develop between them in her attempt to understand herself, what she wants in love and life, and dealing with the constraints that society have placed on her as a sex-positive black woman. If you only want to see the woman love woman stuff, be warned that she has a lot of relatively graphic sex scenes with multiple men. Just so you know.